Hello everyone, in this video, I'm going to show to you how to prove some of the identities of the gamma function which is gamma of alpha plus 1 is equal to alpha times gamma of alpha where alpha is greater than 0 and then I'm going to prove to you that gamma of n is equal to n minus 1 factorial. Let's now do the proof. Gamma of alpha plus 1 is equal to by definition of gamma function we have integral of t raised to for alpha let's use alpha plus 1 instead we have alpha plus 1 then minus 1 then e raised to negative t dt we have from 0 to infinity now plus 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 so we can cancel them out so we're left with integral of t raised to alpha e raised to negative t dt this is from 0 to infinity. Let's now integrate this one. In order to integrate this one, we're gonna use the uh, integration by parts. Remember the formula integration of u dv is equal to u v minus the integral of v du. In this case, let u is equal to t raised to alpha and dv is the rest of the term e raised to negative t dt. Then du is the derivative of this one, alpha t raised to alpha minus 1 dt. And v is the integral of this one, which is negative e raised to negative t. Then gamma of alpha plus 1 is equal to this one, which is equal to this one when we do the transformation. So we have uv, which is t raised to alpha, and v is this one minus e raised to negative t this will be evaluated from 0 to infinity and this one integral of v du so we have integral of v du which is for this case v is negative e negative t and du is this one alpha t raised to alpha minus 1 dt this is from 0 to infinity let's evaluate this one if we substitute infinity for both t in here for here we get infinity and for here e raised to negative infinity this is equal to 1 over e raised to infinity and 1 over e raised to infinity is 1 over infinity and 1 over infinity is 0 so we get infinity times 0 which can be uh, infinity or 0 so let's evaluate that using L hospitals rule so Remember that uh, L hospitals rule uh, states that limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches infinity is equal to a limit of the derivative of f of x over the derivative of g of x as x approaches infinity. Now let's apply this rule for this term. Limit of we can rewrite this one as negative t raised to alpha over uh, e raised to t as t approaches infinity. Then we get limit of derivative of this one is negative alpha t raised to alpha minus 1. And derivative of this one is still e raised to t. Then this is t approaches infinity. Now we can again do that. Alpha, alpha minus 1. This is t raised to alpha minus 2 over e raised to t as t approaches infinity. So the powers of t will get reduced uh, as we do that rule again and again. And it can go on and on until uh, this, the powers of t will become negative. It starts from a certain value, which is uh, a certain value greater than 0 in here until it becomes negative and this denominator will not be changed so we'll get here limit of a certain value negative alpha as alpha minus one etc until t let me have another variable negative where say nu is a uh, additive inverse for the resulting value then over e raised to t then this one will become this is t approaches infinity and this will become a uh, limit 
as the approaches infinity alpha times alpha minus 1, etc. This t raised to negative nu can be put at the denominator e raised to t, where nu is a positive because it's a additive inverse of the resulting uh, powers when it becomes negative. So if we substitute infinity for t in here, this one will become infinity and this one will become infinity. So we get 1 over infinity is equal to 0. So this one is 0. Then if we substitute 0 for both t, in here we get 0. Then in here we get e raised to negative 0, which is equal to e raised to 0. Or e raised to 0 is equal to 1, so we get 0 times 1 as uh, 0. So we get 0. Then this one, negative negative cancelled, we have plus integral of alpha, we can move out this one from the integration. And here we can rewrite this one, t raised to alpha minus 1, and this one, e raised to negative t, 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 0 to infinity. Now, if you compare this one to the definition of the gamma function, they are the same. So we'll get gamma of alpha as defined from here. Now, for our resulting equation, alpha gamma of alpha. So gamma of alpha plus 1 is equal to this one, which is the same, same with this one. So we have our proof for this identity. Now let's prove the other identity, which is gamma of n is equal to n minus 1 factorial. Gamma of n, let's apply this one for this one. So if let n equals to alpha plus 1, then alpha is n minus 1. So we get here, from here, we get n minus 1 gamma of n minus 1. Then for gamma of n minus 1, we can have, so similar to that, we'll just reduce this one by 1. So we get n minus 1 minus 1 is n minus 2. This is gamma of n minus 2. Then for gamma n minus 2, this will become n minus 3, gamma of n minus 3. Then we can do it, so on and so on, until we stop at gamma of 2 is equal to uh, 1 times gamma of 1. So we're going to stop in here because we can get the value for this one. Let me uh, derive the value of gamma of 1. This is equal to, by definition of this one, we have the integral of t raised to 4 alpha. Let's use 1 instead. So we have 1 minus 1 e raised to negative t dt, 0 to infinity. 1 minus 1 is 0, so we get t raised to 0 or 1, so we get integral of e raised to negative t dt from 0 to infinity. Now let's evaluate this integral. This will become e or negative e raised to negative t from 0 to infinity. And this one, if we substitute infinity for this one, we'll get e raised to negative infinity, but e raised to negative infinity is 0. So we get first 0 minus, we'll try to substitute 0 for this one. e raised to negative 0 is e raised to 0, but e raised to 0 is 1, so we get negative 1. So we get negative 1 in here. This is equal to 1. So this one, gamma of 1 is equal to 1. Now, gamma of n then is equal to n minus 1. Then gamma of n minus 1 is equal to this one, which is n minus 2 times the gamma of n minus 2. But for gamma n minus 2, we get this one. Then we're going on until we get 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. Now this one is 
n minus 1 factorial. So, gamma of n is equal to n minus 1 factorial. That ends our proof.